So here we are with video two of chapter 19. This video is called Wave Behavior. In it, we're going to talk about the two main types of waves uh, as being transverse and longitudinal. And we're going to talk about wave interference and what happens when uh, one or two or more waves come into contact with one another. So make sure you've got your notes ready to go. And uh, here we go. So suppose you were to attach the, uh, a rope to a wall, and you hold the free end, and you begin to shake the free end up and down, okay? What's going to happen is there's going to be a pulse that's going to travel down that rope and then reflect back on you. So you're creating waves here. The direction of the wave is from left to right, down that rope, okay? The motion of the rope itself, though, is up and down. So the motion of the rope is at right angles to the direction in which that wave is moving. Whenever the motion of the medium, in this case the rope, is at right angles to the direction the wave travels, the wave's a transverse wave. Waves in the stretched strings of musical instruments like a guitar, or violin, and on the surfaces of liquids like water are all transverse waves. The other major type of wave is called a longitudinal wave. To think about a longitudinal wave, think about taking a spring and attaching a spring to a wall and stretching a spring out, and then you kind of smack the end of it so that a pulse, a wave pulse, uh, travels down that spring and back where there's areas that compress and areas that stretch. This is called a longitudinal wave. Longi in longitudinal waves, the particles of the medium move back and forth in the same direction in which the rate wave travels. So here the wave is moving in this direction and the particles are moving back and forth. So when those particles oscillate parallel or along the direction of the wave, that's a longitudinal wave. One common example of a longitudinal wave that you experience every day is sound. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. What happens with sound waves is that whatever uh, creates the source for that wave, whatever vibrates to create that source, pushes those air molecules together. That energy then is transferred to other air molecules and there's areas of compression and areas where there's not compression. Those areas where those uh, molecules come together is called a compression and the areas where they're spread apart is called a rarefaction. In a longitudinal wave then, the wavelength is the distance from a compression to compression or rarefaction to rarefaction. In this picture here, we see a longitudinal wave and we see that the compressions correspond to crests in a sine wave and the rarefactions uh, correspond to troughs in a sine wave. Now, both transverse and longitudinal waves we can demonstrate with a loosely coiled spring. When the end of a coiled spring is shaken up and down, like this, we get a transverse wave. When it's shaken in and out, we get a longitudinal wave. And we will see demonstrations of this in class. Now we want to begin to turn our attention to the way waves behave, okay? We're going to start by talking about what's called wave interference. Now, material objects like rocks or cars or people or whatever cannot share the same space at the same time. However, with waves, more than one wave can exist at the same time in the same space. For example, if we drop two rocks into water, Waves are going to propagate out from those points where we drop, where we disturb that water. So those waves produced by each rock can overlap and form what we call an interference pattern. An interference pattern is just a regular arrangement of places where wave effects are increased, decreased, or neutralized. When more than one wave occupies the same space at the same time, the displacements of that medium add up at every point. This is called the superposition principle. So when the crest of one wave overlaps the crest of another, their individual effects add together to produce a wave of increased amplitude. This is called constructive interference. So with constructive interference, the crest of one wave will overlap the crest of another and their individual effects add together. The result then is a wave of increased amplitude. 
Another type of interference is called destructive interference. With destructive interference, the crest of one wave overlaps the trough of another and their individual effects are reduced. The high part of one wave will, will fill in the low part of the other and we get what's called cancellation. So, in constructive interference, the waves reinforce each other to produce a wave of increased amplitude. And in destructive interference, the waves cancel each other and no wave is produced. So when this happens, we talk about waves being in phase and out of phase. When waves are out of phase, the crests of one wave overlap the troughs of another to produce regions of zero amplitude. This is destructive interference. So out of phase, waves are experiencing destructive interference. When waves are in phase, the crests of one wave will overlap the crests of the other, and, and, and troughs will overlap as well, giving us constructive interference. So when waves are... Uh, are in phase, they're experiencing constructive interference. Now, wave interference is easiest to see in water, such as in this picture right here. What we see here is we've got this water coming in. There's a, a source of waves from this direction and a source of waves from this direction, and those waves are meeting each other, and we're getting areas of constructive interference and destructive interference. To look at this in a more kind of controlled situation, we can take a look at this picture over here. In, in this picture A, we've got two overlapping water waves producing an interference pattern. Okay, so we can see this interference pattern in these actual water waves. There's a source here and a source here. Those waves propagate out this way, and what we see are areas of constructive interference and destructive interference. Where the waves crests come together and make kind of these fuzzy lines right in here, those are areas of constructive interference. In these areas here, where they're, it's, it's, uh, they look wider, okay, those are areas of destructive interference. So here, those waves are in phase. Here, in these areas, they're out of phase. So another way to see this is we can draw a picture of it like we've done here in B and overlapping concentric circles produce this pictorial representation of an interference pattern. In the pattern, these are areas then of constructive interference, and these are areas of destructive interference between those. Now, interference is a characteristic of all wave motion. Whether the waves are water waves or sound waves or light waves, all waves will experience interference. Because even though a lot of waves, especially sound waves and water waves, require a medium to travel through, what's traveling is energy. And that energy can interfere with each other in these waves. So that's what we'll see as we look more and more into waves and wave behavior. We'll see examples of interference in class. We'll see you then.